Hi, my name is Kamala, and I'll be presenting our work on understanding, uncovering, and mitigating the causes of inference slowdown for language models. So can you tell what the difference is between these two sentences? With the second one, we have these two minor typos. And so this comes from a movie review. And say we have some BERT model that's been fine-tuned on a sentiment classification task. So it can take some movie review input and map it to a positive or negative sentiment label. By the way, this is part of the uh, Stanford Sentiment Tree Bank task, SST2. I'll be using that throughout this presentation. But take that first sentence I showed you. We pass it through the model, and it receives the correct classification of a positive sentiment. And then we take the second sentence, pass it through the model, and it also receives the correct classification. But the difference is that it takes the model about two times the work to arrive at this prediction. And that's because these two typos have been made as part of what's called a slowdown attack, which is modifying a model input. So with text, this could be swapping characters, adding characters, deleting characters, replacing words with synonyms, et cetera. But these modifications are made with the intent to cause delayed inference on these input samples. So saying two times the amount of work isn't exactly correct. What's actually happening here is this first input is able to be accurately predicted by the sixth layer of this 12 layer model. So it can exit the model early. Whereas after we execute the slowdown attack, the sentence can no longer exit early. And I'm gonna explain early exiting in more depth later, but I wanted to show this kind of real world scenario of where this can be problematic. Take this IoT setting example, and we have an edge device that's resource constrained. So we just put half of the model on the device, put the rest on the cloud. With the original sentence, with this early exiting strategy, the input can be accurately predicted just on the device itself. But when we launch this slowdown attack, now the input has to pass through the full model, which means the input has to be transmitted to the cloud. And so slowdown attacks can cause this extra cost associated with these excessive transmissions to the cloud, and that can be very costly. So in our work, we are aiming to better understand what causes slowdown in the language domain. And it's, for one, motivated by the fact that the concept of the slowdown attack is new in general and underexplored in general, but particularly for text, where it's especially important to understand because um, with, in practice, large language models are very expensive, they're computationally expensive. So a variety of methods have been proposed to alleviate these costs, but slowdown attacks can render these cost-saving methods completely useless. So I'll present our findings in two main parts. First, I'll talk about what causes slowdown for text. And then I'll talk about a mitigation strategy that we've come up with that's the first effective defense against slowdown. So I'll present a variety of empirical results, but kind of the main conclusions that we've come to are that with text, the mechanisms surrounding inference slowdown are both unanticipated and cryptic, but understanding them can help us explain the effectiveness of the mitigation strategy that I'll introduce. So for the continuation of this presentation, I'll start by explaining some important background concepts, then I'll go through our exploration of what causes slowdown for text, and then I'll introduce our mitigation strategy. So to start with the background, the types of models that we focus on in our work are called multi-exit models. And multi-exit models use this understanding that inputs often don't need to pass through a full model in order to be accurately predicted. Instead, they can exit early through what are called internal classifiers or ICs. And we, at least for our work, we usually assume that there's one at every hidden layer. And these ICs will map a layer's hidden state to some internal prediction. And um, an input can potentially exit at any I see, and then ultimately receive that internal prediction. And these internal predictions are represented by confidence scores associated with each class label. And then uh, an input can potentially exit at an IC based on these confidence scores. So according to confidence-based exiting criteria, um, an input can exit an IC if one of the class's confidence scores passes some tunable threshold, or according to patience-based 
exiting criteria, you just need some number of consecutive ICs to agree on, uh, on a prediction. So these types of models can save us in cost, but as I showed you with this example earlier, they're also vulnerable to slowdown attacks. So an input that should be able to exit early in a model can be attacked so that it has to exit later. And so this concept of a slowdown attack, it's very new. It was first introduced to the image domain in 2021 with the Deep Sloth paper and recently introduced to text with the first text-based slowdown attack, the Slowbird attack. This was just published last year. And both of these attacks have a similar objective where essentially the, the aim is to force each of these ICs confidence scores towards a uniform distribution across all labels. So with the sentiment classification example, that would be 0.5 for positive, 0.5 for negative. So essentially the model can never be certain enough towards one class or the other in order to allow for this early exiting. It's essentially confused the whole time. So now I'll talk about our exploration of the sources of text-based slowdown. I'll start by explaining some assumptions we had that were interestingly incorrect. And then I'll talk about a way that we can use a machine learning model to understand this kind of unique understanding of um, the distinction between earlier exiting inputs and later exiting inputs. So unlike with images, we found that with text misclassification attacks, so attacks that intend to cause misclassification, will usually come with a slight inadvertent slowdown effect. And even random modifications to a text can often cause slowdown. So what we found is that text-based slowdown is relatively easy to induce because it can be attributed to vague notions of confusion. And confusion is um, a more flexible and less constrained goal than misclassification, for example. But even though we're able to see this model confusion happening, it's hard for us to link this confusion to discernible patterns in a text. So we have explained a variety, or sorry, we have explored a, a variety of hypotheses related to patterns that could be linked to this model confusion. And I'll leave a lot of those details to the paper, but here's kind of a summary of our hypotheses based on intuitions that, that um, come from our understanding of how images work, adversarial attacks in general. And we've even taken ins inspiration from what we understand um, about a text to be more difficult for humans to process. So since this is such a, a challenging kind of concept to uncover, we thought, what if a machine learning model can learn this distinction between early and late exiting samples? So we defined this novel exit classification task where it's a binary classification task and a model is trying to predict if an input could exit relatively early in a multi-exit model or relatively late. And so for example, with the sentiment classification task, we took the original SST2 samples, passed them through a multi-exit model, took note of the exit they took. And if they took exits one through four, we mapped them to this new exit label zero. And if they took exits eight through 12, we mapped them to exit label one. And as evidenced by these AUC scores, the model was able to learn this task pretty well. And so now that it has this understanding of what distinguishes early exiting text and late exiting text, we use this understanding to create a new sort of slowdown attack. So the way we designed this is we took the text fuller attack, which is a kind of baseline misclassification attack for text. Um, we took this attack approach and instead of having the goal be to misclassify between positive and negative sentiment labels, we had the misclassification happen with these new exit labels. So when we had the objective be to misclassify exit label zero as exit label one samples or early exiting samples as late exiting samples, then the modifications that the attack made actually allowed these new attack inputs to have to exit. Thank you. Um, so these results here on the y-axis, I'm plotting the percent increase in average exit layer. And the x-axis is just the patients. That's the exiting criteria we were using. And you can compare this increase in exit layer 
to, in the green is just the baseline tech schooler attack that aims to cause misclassification. The pink is the slow bird attack that aims to intentionally cause slowdown. And then we decided to kind of flip the objective, try and misclassify later exiting samples as earlier exiting samples. And that led to kind of a speed up effect. So you see a negative increase in average exit layer. Samples were able to exit earlier. So these results support the idea that this model is learning some distinction between earlier and later exiting texts. And if you wanna come by my poster, I can explain why we have reason to believe that this distinction is different from what the slow bird attack kind of inherently takes advantage of when it's creating these later exiting samples. But now I'll explain our mitigation strategy. We call it expedited adversarial training because it's not quite adversarial training. It's more flexible and it's more efficient. So what we're doing is we're creating these augmented training data sets and we're using these to train models that can be robust to slow down. And with typical adversarial tra training, you have to augment a data set with adversarial examples, which can be very costly to produce. But as I've shown, and there's more evidence of this in the paper, slowdown is relatively easy to induce. So it's easier to create synthetic samples that we can augment a training data set with. And the way we create these synthetic samples, we use this kind of general formula. We take some original samples, for example, some original SST2 samples, choose some words and replace them with different words. And we found that using these different variations of this approach, um, lead to results that are relatively the same, which means you can use the, the quickest possible combination here. You can take random words and replace them with random words, and you'll still get a near optimal effect, which makes this very efficient. So first I'll show some training results. And here I'm plotting the evaluation um, data sets, average exit on the y-axis, and the training epoch is on the x sorry, on the x-axis. Note here that the patient's value is five. So it means five consecutive layers have to agree on the same classification before the exit can happen, which means the earliest possible exit is layer six. And that's the, the bottom of the graph here. So first I'm plotting um, a model that was trained with just original samples, 5,000 samples. And then I'll show you results from augmenting this data set, creating synthetic samples, and having this new data set be roughly 11,000 samples, we trained a model with these samples. And you see, even with these benign test samples, you're seeing earlier exiting. And you might think, well, you have more samples, so that's why you have a better model. So we created this additional baseline using roughly the same number of samples, well, actually the exact same number of samples, but all original samples. And we see that there's still not quite as early exiting happening there. So this is just with benign samples, but we also tested this method against samples that had been slow down attacked. So here are these results for SST2. And so I'm comparing a baseline model that was just trained with the original data set to robust models that were trained with augmented data sets that were augmented using slightly different methods of creating synthetic samples. And again, you see with the benign samples, there's quicker exiting with the robust, the robust models. And then I'm including three different methods for inducing slowdown, the slow bird attack that intentionally causes slowdown, the exit classification attack that I introduced, and the text fuller attack that just inadvertently causes slowdown. It's a misclassification attack. And again, we see this decrease in average exit. And keep in mind that layer six is the earliest possible exit with patients five. And we have more results with more data sets and more ways of inducing slowdown in the paper. But across all of these kind of attack types, we see that we can mitigate this slowdown effect. So in conclusion, kind of the main points that I want to leave you with is that we found that sources of slowdown for language are both unexpected, they don't match our assumptions, and they're cryptic, they're hard to place on certain discernible patterns in a text. And it's slowdown is linked to model confusion, which we consider a flexible and vague goal, and it's easy to induce for language. And lastly, we can mitigate slowdown through our proposed method of expedited adversarial training. Uh, we kind of hypothesize that this might relate to the fact that we're familiarizing a model with more confusing text. These 
synthetic samples we're creating, you could think of as more confusing because we're replacing words with random words, or even with synonyms, we could end up with some um, hard to infer text. So through familiarizing a model with these types of texts, perhaps we're allowing it to be more confident with slow texts in general. But thank you for listening and I'll take any questions.